Even more Jeopardy with a premium subscription? Jeopardy! At 5 a.m. last night, play Jeopardy! And you can replay today's clues. Do you want to learn more? No. No, I'm good. Do you want to replay the daily clues? Yes. Here are the clues for today. Your first category is love story. Uh-oh. It's the flowery first name of the woman for whom the great Gatsby pines. That's easy. Where's Joseph? Who is Daisy? Sorry. The correct response was what is Daisy? Who is, what is, what? This disease, where unhealthy blood cells quickly form in bone marrow, is the most common cancer in children. What is leukemia? Correct. Ha! The fourth category is shake it off. Uh-oh. The response is a word arrived at by removing the letters IT from another word. Remove it from a word describing someone with good manners to get this fishing tool. Oh, easy. What is a pole? No. The correct response was what is pole. It, that's, all, that's what I said! It's, um, it is. Bro, you're not bulking for crap, dude. You're not eating anything. No, you're not. You're like, you're like what, 115? What? Times <laughs> 115. I can't even rep 315. I mean, can most people rep 315? What? No. Yeah, I know. What? Yeah, most people bitch. Incline. Yeah. Incline, dude. Yeah, but you got that. Okay, that's what's happening. Can you can you squat 315? Oh, no, I don't hear it. Okay, you thank you. I don't hear it. Oh, uh, I don't hear it. I don't hear it. No, I don't know. No, AC, ACL this, ACL that. You're weak, buddy. <laughs> but imagine you tell your knee, people are just like, you suck, bro. Like, I can't do it. I'm getting back to it. Oh, Jeopardy. 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 Jeopardy.
stand. This is terrible. I'm making that to y'all with this workout. So y'all, we are working on tricep. Yo. What you work hard there, buddy? Me? Yeah. What about you? What? What's up? Anyway, so we are doing tricep. We're gonna go for four sets of 10. Uh, uh, let's go to failure. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say that I'm gonna force us to failure. Um, and then we'll just kinda figure it out from there. Anyways, this is something I wanted to talk to y'all about, man. I talk about getting in the Lord's quiet place. Uh, getting in a quiet place to get into the presence of the Lord. Um, the Bible speaks about getting into the quiet place because it's good to be able to have knowledge and use it in public. Um, it's good to speak to the Lord at church and in front of people, but getting into the quiet, your quiet place is where you learn. That's where you build a relationship with God in a deeper and more personal way. It's when you go off on your own. Even Jesus went off on his own. You hear about it many times about it. Even Jesus goes off on his own, and that's where Jesus would talk to the Father. And we, as well, need to go talk to the Father on our own, have conversation with the Lord on our own, um, pray on our own, and really learn the Lord further. A lot of us are God's acquaintances, truly. We don't know too much about him, and we haven't try to let him know too much about us he knows no matter what but we haven't made it a relationship where we could just go talk to him or we have just wanted to talk to him and that's what we're called to do is have a relationship where we can place it all on the lord and not feel like it's all on us and that's kind of what we need to build towards and, and grow in um because the lord wants to grow us up he wants to be with us he wants to strengthen us and if we truly give ourselves to him and dedicate ourselves to him then he will be good to us and he will show his face unto us when we seek him in private. Moses went on to the Mount Sinai alone. He went up there, and that's where the Lord showed himself to Moses. Um, again, it's when you go to the Lord by yourself in a quiet place, where you take time for yourself to go meet the Lord, that you will meet him in his presence. Uh, look into the set, man. Is the pose off of the century? Two big boys, four fifty each. What's going on YouTube? Okay. Now give us a last break. Last 
Ka. Let's see, front double buys. Oh, we're doing the uh, dog toys got one of them. Traps. Traps. <laughs> Traps, buddy. Oh, that's, that's already, that's dead. Go ahead. Call him out. Call him out. Call him out. Oh. oh. <laughs> side chest. Side chest, side chest. Yo, big boy. Man, Ward said he a unit. Good, good, man. Abs. <laughs> Cut. Cut. Ah, uh, that may be big boy. What about back? Who the one Big back? boy and B going crazy. Y'all let us know in the back? comments. And I think my last one's coming out more. I don't know. I'm thinking it's far too YouTube friendly. Two big boys. If I left a letter at your door, would you even read it anymore? And if I knock three times, tell me, will it all be fine? Then you'll open up that door. Won't you open up that door? Won't you open up that door? If I left a, if I left a letter at your door, would you even read it anymore? That's the question. And question number two is if I told you to do abs, would you do them? You would not, because we're being lazy. Nobody wants to do abs. No one wants to do abs. But we need them. We can't be walking around like any, any way. What's the point of having big muscles and big arms? If your stomach don't look like a cheese grater. I'm trying to walk into the airport, and they say I have a certified weapon on my stomach. Hey, tell me this. Wouldn't it be crazy to have abs so sharp that when you walk into the airport, they tell you you can't come in because they're too sharp? They have to confiscate your chest, your stomach, because you got the weapons on you. Can you imagine that? That's what I'm trying to get, man. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I don't even have to walk through the metal detector. They done seen it already. That's, that's, I'm trying to look like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Strip search. Strip search. So, uh, those cheese girls can't come in here, but. Some girls like to bottle flowers But I don't think it says enough Cause I would write you a letter for hours Because I know you with more than Cheese Greatus. Uh, Trey's not here with us today, so in memory of our, our good friend Trey, uh, I'll do a set of this. <laughs> Trey, you remember the time, Trey, you helped me hit 54. <laughs> 54 reps to beat what you did before, and I bragged about it and cut you out and cropped you out because I didn't want to give you any credit because I was ashamed. I should have been ashamed. I know you'll be back soon, but I mean... <laughs> Man, this this our machines, right? I did two reps already without you. I'm sorry. I I I, uh, I kind of forgot to record, but I wanted to make this special for you, Trey. This is for you. I'm gonna I'm going for I'm going for 40, Trey. I'm going for 40 for the four letters in your name. Did I get it? I, I totally just made that one spot. This is for you, Trey. I totally made that up on spot.
So I got 26, bro. I'm sorry. If you were here, I already got 50. But you know what? We're going to push ourselves again. We're going to get 14 more and finish this thing out for you, Trey. For you, Trey. For you. Give you the world, baby girl. You just got to be worth it. Uh, uh, uh. You don't got to be puffy. Yeah, yeah. You just got to be worthy, yeah, 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 yeah. Check you worth it, man. 14! It's bigger than a Ford F-150. He hauls more than a truck. He is the deer, not the buck. He is a B. Megatron in the flesh. Any route, any day, running mess. He does it for Trey. Trey, we did it, Trey, we did it. Oh. Oh. That's my Jimbo, yo. He's a big guy, but um, I'll always be bigger. <laughs> How y'all doing today? Today is currently the 25th, I believe. Um, this video is for the 24th. Um, but of course, you know, like I say always, we can't end without the word of the Lord. Um, today I read Psalms 139, a beautiful text. I mentioned yesterday how I knew one verse already, which was the seventh verse. I also have known the eighth verse, did not memorize it, but I do know the eighth verse. There's some other verses in there that you hear going to church growing up. Um, but just start, uh, reading, going through the book of Psalms in, in general, you'll hear uh, a lot of different things you've heard in your life um what kind of come from psalms because psalms hold a lot of information a lot of truth and it's a lot about faith um because during the old testament obviously they lived by faith um very strongly and, and we see that um but in, here in 139 we see the omniscient display of god's om omniscience in full effect we see the understanding of his ability to know us beyond our own understanding of ourselves. For he knew us before our conception. He knew us in our conception. He knows us in our life. And, and, and even when we pass, he'll know us in our death. Um, and to know that a God knows us so intimately. How can we not trust him enough with our situations and with our life? Why do we lack the faith to go to him in moments where we're in need or just to, to, to spend our day in and day out with him. I mean, if he knows us better than ourselves, doesn't it just make sense to go to him about all things that relate to our lives? Step by step, day by day, all we're going through because he already says he'll fight our battles. Then why not go ahead and, and, and let him know where we're at, what we need? And he may he, sure God already knows it. But I mean, he wants us to build a relationship to the point where we're going to come to him about it ourselves. He wants us to trust him and have faith enough to give it to him ourselves. And and us knowing he knows us so much should make us want to know more about him. That Because I, I mean, that's how relationships work. I mean, it's almost like being a fan. You know what I'm saying? Um, when you're a fan of somebody, you know all about them and all their stats. All their like, I can tell you half the stats of people like AJ Green, Calvin Johnson, and um, Jerry Rice, and all these great receivers all the time. They can't tell you one thing I done did in my entire life. You know what I'm saying? But that's not a relationship. But but uh, let's let's say me and my friend Jay, or me and Connor, me and Trey, we can tell each, um, as many things about each other as we want to say. Um, me and Cheeto, me and X, anybody from my MLG group, anybody uh, that, I'm, that I'm close with like that can tell you many things about me and I can tell you intimately things about them because we built a relationship. And and because of the relationship we formed, not only do we just know stuff about each other, we have trust and faith in each other to the point we can come to each other and need to help. We have the ability to go to one another and ask for help and, and not worry about whether or not they're going to bring the help that we need. And, and it's quite obvious that when you learn more and more about God, you understand all that he can do for you and, and not just for you, through you and that he can do for the world. Um, there's a there's a YouTuber named Young Don. I remember when he first gave his life to Christ in the beginning, when he first got curious again about coming to the faith. The biggest reason for him is that he had a, he had a, a young uh, daughter, uh, a newborn daughter. 
or she was young at the time, and he also had a wife, and he wanted to, he wanted to know the best way to protect them. He didn't know much about God, but all he knew is that there's a limit to what he could do, a limit to what he could do, because what man is limited. There was a limit to what he could do to protect his family. But he said, if I want to see my family protected, I need he who can do all things and greater things than I can do. And and the one place we all know we can go is the Lord. But understand, he can do far greater than just our physical help. He can do he can do the work in, in our spiritual and our mental, and he can do the work even away from us. Because again, God works behind the scenes. Remember, he was working in our conception and previous to our conception. And even after our death, the Lord will keep working. The Lord is, is not limited by time, space, or, or, or anything related to man. The Lord works when the Lord wants to work, and he will move according to his will. And when man is in alignment with the Lord's will, that is when we will begin to see great things occur in our lives. And what better way to know the Lord's will than to get to know the Lord? And what's a better way to get to know the Lord than to intimately grow in relationship? You must learn the Lord as he knows us, and we we must look to find him more. It's more than just reading the Bible. It's more than just praying every single morning, every single night. It's generally building a connection where we learn to speak to him and learn to listen. And that's what I'm working on now is listening because it's great to speak. But after a while, you just become a ranter. You have to be able to listen too because you can't ask for the answers if you're not going to listen for it. You know what I'm saying? It don't make sense to call to God and tell him, I need help with this. I need you to help me with this and pull me out of this. If you're not looking for the help or the answer that you've been looking for, we must be, be adamant about building this relationship and understanding that no matter how far we go or how close we are, God is there regardless. The Bible, the Bible in 139, there's a verse that says that whether, whether I, go, I build my house in heaven or build my house in hell, regardless, you are there. You know where I am, regardless. Why? Because the Lord is intimate with his people. He knows us greater than we know ourselves. It does not matter whether how far we stray or how, how or whatever we do in our lives. The Lord is always there and he can always have an impact if we, if we just accept him and give him our all to, to see his effect in our lives. Psalms 139.7, whither shall I uh, go from thy spirit or whither shall I flee from thy presence? There is nowhere you can go to escape the Lord. But if you choose not to, to give him, um, give yourself to him, then you will not. Uh, he's going to be there, but you're not going to notice. You're not going to know because you're not going to be able to see the goodness if you won't accept it. The, again, we spoke about this. God, When Jesus Christ went on the cross, the gift was given. But the problem is a lot of people have not opened up the uh, have not opened up the gift. A lot of people still got the gift sitting in the closet. Closet, sitting under the tree man the only time they think about the gifts is when christmas come around they ain't worried about opening that gift day in day out walking in that forgiveness they're not worried about that gift no more because they're too busy understanding because once you open up that gift you have to close all other doors to the world and you must focus on that gift that god's giving you and you must use that gift to create more open doors in the kingdom for more people that we more have, may have more seats at the dinner table for more believers in Christ. That we may grow this, this kingdom for the Lord. Psalms 139. What is it about? Psalms 139 is about the omniscience of God. The, the, the interpersonal connection he wants with his people. And, the, and the, the fact that he knows us greater than ourselves and can do more for us than we ever could alone. So why would we not want to live life with God and give ourselves to him that he may work through us, in us, and do his will above our own? Psalms 139. Let us pray. Father God, your message is forever written on our hearts. It's forever written in your word. And let us not be far from it. You're always there, God. But the more that we we stray away, is the harder it is to see you, Lord God. Because we put blinders on ourselves and we question where did you go, not understanding it was us who walked away for you never moved. You're always in the same place because you're a never changing God. And if you don't change, then when things change, and clearly something happened with us. So we have to tell ourselves, God, it's time to give up our, our life. It's time to give up our own selfish ambitions and will and, and, and give ourselves into your word and your will alone. To live a life according to you. To live a life, Lord God, that worships you and dedicates to you. That you may receive the glory above all else for you are God. 
And we say thank you to that and for that, that you may be glorified. We ask you, Lord God, that you will lessen us, Lord God, that your name may be glorified above all else. Because if we glorify self, then we are not walking in faith, but we are walking in sin. Walking in faith, Lord God, means regardless of Lord God who pats me on the back, I understand it is you and your righteousness, Lord God, that has cleansed me and clothed me. And forever, Lord God, I will walk, Lord God, to glorify your name on high. I ask you to quiet me. Quiet, A.B. Quiet, Alex. No matter what I'm called, Lord God, at the end of the day, I've been called redeemed. I've been called righteous. And in that, Lord God, I walk in you. And I just ask, Lord God, that we all walk in that and that we move differently and we quiet ourselves to the world. We quiet ourselves to the flesh and we listen to you. We trust in you to change us, Lord God, for we cannot change ourselves. For if we could, Lord God, we could save ourselves. And if we could save ourselves, your son would have never hanged blood and died on the cross for our sins. But yet he did. And because of that, we are new. We have been made redeemed and we will walk in that, never forgetting your goodness. For you have never forgot us. You never will. And you will never move for you are never changing. God, it was always the same, always omnipotent, always omniscient, and always present. So we say thank you. We worship your name on high. And we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor for the rest of our days. It's in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Psalms 139. The Lord is ever present. That's going to be the title for this video. The Lord is ever present. Um, I don't ever make titles until I read the chapter because I believe that there's no better way to title this video than the most important part, which is the Lord. Um, so again, Psalms 139, I believe the Lord is ever present and he's all knowing. So let's, let's, let's trust him with our lives today, man. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. And y'all saw me in the gym and had a little fun. Hey, Trey, man, I, I miss you, man. Love you, my boy. All my boys back at home, miss y'all. And, and everybody watching, man, I appreciate y'all, man. Nobody let them out. One, two, three. 20 it don't matter thank y'all man hope y'all have a great day enjoyed the video and make sure you leave a like comment and subscribe and i pray you enjoy the vibe hey man no limit I told myself I didn't care It made me kiss some more Staying at the ceiling Things to do But I'ma stare some more Wondering what I gotta do They keep saying let it go Sometimes it be hard to let go The only thing you know Some relationships last forever But sometimes People that you thought would be forever Only sometimes Me and what they saying about forever Cause sometimes People just be saying anything Yeah sometimes